Okay, let's get this party started. Are you excited, Kate? I am excited, yeah. Good stuff, good. That is the right answer, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> So um, hello, everyone, and welcome to TMF Week 2022. Um, thank you for um, joining us today. Um, I am your host, Kimberly Bruce, and I work in the marketing team here at Montreal, and I'm excited to be hosting today's session. Um, I just wanted to let you know that day one session, day one, session two, the vendor selection blueprint, getting the right ETMF in-house is what we will be presenting today. Um, just before we go over, um, oops, sorry about that. Just before we um, get to like the fun stuff, I just want to go over some housekeeping rules. So all sessions will be recorded and then made available at the end of the day. Um, all attendees will receive a certificate of attendance for the entire TMF week, not just for one session. This is going to be an interactive session, so feel free to ask questions. This is what TMF Week is all about, so make sure that you get your um, questions out to Kate, um, and she'll be um, really gracious to like, answer all of your questions. Um, and just so that you know, questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. And there wouldn't be a TMF Week if there wouldn't be a networking break, so please, after every session, make your way over to uh, the networking lounge uh, where you can, you know, rub shoulders with your peers and colleagues, or you can check out Montreal's booth. Um, so without further ado, I would just like to um, introduce Kate. He has been in the industry for over 20 years and currently works at Intelia Therapeutics in Cambridge, Massachusetts, as the head of TMF. Kate implemented ETMF systems at both Alchemize and Bluebird Bio and is currently assessing vendors or ETMF implementation at Intelia. Her focus is finding a system and creating efficient processes that don't overburden the internal team and leverage the CRO where possible. So without further ado, I would like to um, just share the, throw the baton over to Kate. And you can start sharing your screen. Okay. Can you see that, Kimberly? I can. I'm just going to add it to the screen. Oh, you just uh, lost it. So we're just going to, if you can put it back up, and we'll put it into the stream again. There we go. And I'll add it in for you. OK. We all set? Perfect. We all set. All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Kate. Thank you, Kimberly. And I do want to just thank Montreal for supporting TMF Week. I think this is just a great way to learn about new best practices and meet people doing the networking and learning about people who are doing the same thing that you're doing. So thank you for supporting this. My name is Kate Santoro. As Kimberly said, I am the Director of Clinical Operations responsible for TMF at Intelia Therapeutics. We are a gene therapy company located in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I have also done TMF management at Bluebird Bio, Decipher Pharmaceuticals, and Alchemies. And so I have done vendor selection for ETMF a couple of times, and I'm very familiar with the ETMF vendors out there and the systems and the features that they provide. I do have to put this disclosure for my company that the views expressed here are based on my experience and not necessarily the views of Intelia. So with that, my talk today, we will talk about making the decision to bring ETMF in-house and some of the things that you should consider. How do you find an ETMF vendor and how do you assess those vendors so that you can find the solution that works best for your company and your situation? So are you ready to bring ETMF in-house? The first thing that we need to do when we are thinking about bringing a change in our documentation management system is to do an assessment of our current state of the TMF. And I put three different buckets here. Maybe these your, your company falls into these buckets. 
um, maybe it's a little similar or a little bit different. The first one I put is chaos. And I think anybody that has a lot of experience with TMF management can uh, empathize with the chaos. Maybe you have some electronic documents. Maybe you have boxes of paper at Iron Mountain. Maybe you have things on SharePoint. Um, kind of a little bit of chaotic mess and you really need to, to assess and to narrow down where the documentation is being housed and how it is being managed. The second bucket that I put is what I called seemingly controlled. And this is where I find myself right now in Intellia. All of our documentation is being managed electronically, but by different vendors in different systems using slightly different indices and slightly different processes for managing that documentation. And then the last bucket I put here, you might laugh. I, I put maybe you just don't know. And you might laugh, but it's true. Maybe you're new to the company and you haven't yet been able to do an assessment of your TMF. And maybe you're new to TMF and you really don't know where to start. And that's okay. If you are find yourself in that last bucket, I do want to highly recommend the TMF reference model and the TMF reference model website. That website provides a lot of tools that are helpful, especially if you're new to the industry. The TMF reference model itself will give you a really good comprehensive look at the types of documentation that is expected when performing clinical trial and would be expected in your TMF. And so taking a look at that model, taking a look at that index, and identifying where those pieces of documentation are currently being housed and how they're being managed, it's a great way to really do an assessment of the current state of your TMF and to help you start to identify what you might need to look for in a TMF system. Some of the reasons that we might have for bringing document management in-house having more control over our documents. I think we are all familiar, the regulatory agencies are really kind of putting the hammer down on showing that you have control of your documentation, showing that you are providing oversight to these different functions and different processes in your clinical trials. Even though we are, as a sponsor, maybe outsourcing some of these functions, it doesn't mean that we don't still have 100% responsibility for overseeing those functions. And so maybe you've decided that taking more control of your documentation will help you determine that you are providing significant oversight to those vendors. Maybe you have had a TMF-related finding to an inspection or an audit, and that's making you make the decision to kind of think about how you manage your documentation. Consistency is also a good reason for bringing ETMF in-house. And this is something that we've found here at Intelia. Like I mentioned, we do have a good control of our documents, but they are being housed in all different systems. And so if we're preparing for an inspection, maybe we want to have all of our documentation in one place using the same indices using the same methods for document collection so we know where all of those pieces of documentation are. And then maybe you're in the middle of inspection preparation, you've noticed maybe some quality issues or some gaps with your documentation, and you feel that by bringing ETMF in-house, it can give you more control over those gaps, filling those gaps, and maintaining good documentation practices. All of these are very valid reasons for bringing ETMF in-house. Other considerations that you might want to think about is inspection. When do you expect to be inspected? If you expect those inspectors to come in within the next six months or a little bit shorter, maybe now is not the right time to bring an ETMF in-house. Maybe you really need to shore up the gaps that you have in your current process and wait until after inspection to make that change. But maybe you have a little bit longer time, and now is the perfect time to start looking at vendors and changing the way that you're managing your documents. Something to think about. When you're thinking about 
making these changes, you also need to kind of think about what kind of process that you want. We talk a little bit about in the TMF field about centralized versus decentralized process. Do you have or will you be able to have the resources to have a centralized TMF team to be responsible for a document upload, quality checks, completeness checks? Or are you going to have to rely on your content owners and have a little bit more of a decentralized process? Maybe content owners are going to be participating in uploading documents, but then you're going to want to have a more centralized team looking at quality. These are things that you need to think about with your particular company and what's going to work best for you. Maybe you also want to have the CROs continue to do their TMF work, but do it inside your ETMF system. That's a possibility, and I highly recommend if you're in that situation that you partner with your CROs and make them more of a partner rather than a vendor-client relationship so that they have some kind of say as to what the process looks like. So you've made that decision. You want to bring ETMF in-house. So how do I go about finding a vendor? Well, in my experience, the typical process for vendor selection includes identifying a list of vendors that have a solution that you're interested in, doing a comprehensive assessment of those vendors, and then maybe narrowing down your selection and doing a head-to-head -head comparison on a couple of vendors. When identifying vendors, I am so sorry to tell you that there is absolutely no magic number of the number of vendors that you need to look at. There are a lot of vendors out there, and maybe you're want, gonna wanna look at all of them, or maybe you're gonna wanna only look at a few of them, but it depends on your situation, it depends on your company with the number of vendors that you're going to look at. Some of the things that might come into play here, perhaps your company has a standard for every time you bring in a new vendor, you need to look at three different selections and do a comparison. In that type of situation, you might be limited to the number of vendors that you can look at. Maybe you have some previous experience, and so you have some vendors that you are interested in looking at. And perhaps there is a preferred provider at your company, and so you're going to want to take a look at that provider as well all things that might help you create or narrow down a list of vendors for ETMF. If you do a standard Google search for ETMF vendors, you will probably get a list of about eight to 10 vendors. So that might be way too many vendors to look at. So you wanna kind of narrow down your selection. Are any of those vendors a current vendor that you're using that you're very happy with? you'll want to keep them on the list. What is your CRO using? Does, is your CRO using an ETMF solution? And have you been able to get in there and kind of navigate around to see if you like or don't like that particular system? Then that might be a vendor that you do or do not want to take a look at. Events like this TMF week and the TMF summit that was held earlier this month are excellent ways to network with folks that are doing exactly what you're doing or have previous experience with that. And I highly recommend, I know that there are network work breaks for this TMF week, getting in there and meeting people in the field and kind of understanding what was important to them when they were looking for ETMF vendors. And then what type of company do you wanna look, what, what, what type of company, excuse me, do you wanna work with? Do you want to work with a large established vendor or do you want to kind of partner with a, a company that is about the same size as you, somebody that's more interested in partnership than in a vendor client specific relationship? Are there specific features that you're interested in when having an ETMF system? Perhaps you have to have a certified copy workflow in your system. Perhaps you need to be able to identify inspection ready documents in your system. If there are features that are must haves for you, then you're gonna to wanna to create a list of those features, have a conversation with these vendors and see if their solution is something that you wanna work with. That, those are kind of some ways that you can narrow down your selection of vendors. 
now that you have a, a list of vendors that you can actually work with, how are you going to assess them? I mentioned having a conversation. Maybe there are some questions that you want to ask each of these vendors. Maybe you have a list of 10 vendors that you're doing initial conversations with. And just by doing a back and forth and having conversations, you might narrow that list down a little bit. The best way to assess a vendor and an ETMF solution is to actually see it, to have a capabilities presentation or a demonstration of the system. All of these vendors are very familiar with doing these capabilities presentations, and I'm sure we'll be happy to set up the time to work with you to show you what their system looks like. Most companies do not rely on an N of one when making a technology decision. So you're probably going to have a team of people that are reviewing these demonstrations and reviewing these, these ETMF vendors. Um, who should you have participate in this demonstration? Well, absolutely the person who will be responsible for this system, whether it be a TMF business owner from a TMF team or someone from CleanOps. If you do have a TMF team, then I highly recommend that you include everybody from the TMF team in these demonstrations. They might have some experience that you don't have, and they might be able to provide some feedback that you don't necessarily see. IT is probably going to want to be a partner in this. If you're bringing a technology in-house, they're going to want to have a say as to what type of vendor that they're going to work with. How much IT support are you going to need? They might have a cybersecurity questionnaire or they might have another type of questionnaire that the technology vendor needs to fill out. And so having them be part of these demonstrations is a key too. They'll be able to ask their questions from a technology standpoint. Having potential system users is important and I highly recommend having experienced users who are familiar with one or two ETMF systems and also having people that are not experienced, people that are very new to TMF and have never used an ETMF system. And I think that the feedback that these people can provide is very valuable. If you are going to ask these people to be participating in document management in the future and actually using this system, whether it be to upload documents or to find documents, then you're going to want to get their feedback, something you're going to want a system that they are can be familiar with, that has a good user interface, that's easy to use, um, and that feedback will be valuable. There might be some other stakeholders that want to participate as well. I put down quality, validation. They're all probably going to have some questions for an ETMF vendor. And if you're using your CROs as a partner and going to participate in this vendor selection, then you want, want to include them as well. So now that you're looking at these demonstrations and these capabilities presentations, how do you do an assessment of these vendors? Because not all vendors are created equal. You're going to be looking at different sizes of companies, larger and smaller. You're going to want to know what they can do what abilities they have to support you when you're making these changes. System features, we're all talking about ETMF and document management, but they're all gonna look a little bit different. What is the user interface? Is it easy to use? Is it easy to figure out? How you navigate through the system, how you do a search and you find documents, you wanna make sure that it's easy for your users. Are you going to migrate documents into the system? Then you're going to want an ETMF system that has the ability. What is the company going to do to help you do that migration? Do you need to have an export? Maybe you need to export audit trails or document lists or whatever. You're going to need to kind of narrow down and find the best system that works for you in those situations. And then reporting capabilities. Do you want a company that has standard reports and dashboards that you can just use and, and provide metrics? Or do you want to have a little bit more flexibility and create specific reports that are interesting to you? All good questions that you need to ask from these vendors. Doing a comparison, in my opinion, a vendor scoring tool is key. 
And if you're not familiar with a vendor scoring tool, perhaps your outsourcing team or your procurement team has a template that you can start from. The vendor scoring tool is going to list the features that are important that you want to look at. And then you're going to be able to rate each vendor and see on one spreadsheet how each participant has rated each vendor for each of those particular features. So maybe not all vendors are the same and maybe not all participants rate vendors the same, but you'll be able to have a good tool that shows a side-by-side -side comparison of those vendors and hopefully provide some feedback to either help you ask additional questions or narrow down your selection. I put together a very, very basic example of a vendor scoring tool. So like I have here is the list of criteria. This one is very small. For the vendor scoring tool that I used most recently, we had 50, five, zero lists of criteria that we were using that we wanted to see from an ETM app system. And then we list vendor one, vendor two, and vendor three. The scoring, we used a one to five rating scale with one being at the bottom and five being an exceptional. And then allowing the participants to provide comments. I think that's key because maybe one of your inexperienced users will say for one of the vendors that this was fantastic and I can absolutely see myself using this system. Or maybe they found something to be a little bit more complicated and you need to drill down and ask additional questions of that vendor. Feedback like that is, is going to be very important to you when making your final selection. So you calculate all of these scores and you can look at the vendors across the board. And whether you use this vendor scoring tool to narrow down your list of vendors or to actually bring one up to the top and, and make your selection from these scoring tools, it can be very, very helpful. Unfortunately, there is no one absolute right way to do this. It's going to depend on your situation, your experience, your company. I put this slide together to kind of provide you with some insight as to my experience with vendor selection. So the first time that I had to implement an ETMF system, I had absolutely no experience. I knew how to manage paper documents, but I had never used an electronic system. I was not familiar with the TMF reference model at all. I did have some CRO partners that we wanted to work in our system. And what I did was really, really partner with them. I asked them a lot of questions. I asked them about how, what they looked for in their ETMF system, what they liked about their system, what they didn't like about their system. And that feedback was very helpful to me. I started with a list of about five ETMF vendors through asking questions. I narrowed that down to three. So we did demonstrations from three different vendors and we had a scoring tool. We had conversations and we asked additional questions and then made our final determination based on those three demonstrations. The second system that I implemented, I had no choice. The vendor was already selected, and so I did not have to participate in vendor selection at all. The third time, I had a lot more experience. I had seen a lot of ETMF systems. I had been familiar with different vendors in the field. I knew what I wanted in a system. So we researched three vendors and did capabilities presentations. We used the scoring tool to narrow down our selection to two vendors and then did a head-to-head -head comparison. We went back with additional questions, we did additional demonstrations, and then made our final selection. And then most recently with Intellia, I came in, they have a preferred provider that they were, that, that had an ETMF system, and I wanted to bring in a comparator so we could look at that preferred provider against a different system. We did some demonstrations from both of those and did the vendor scoring tool. And then we just did a head-to-head -head comparison on those two vendors and made our final selection. I did not choose the same vendor all three times when I participated in vendor selection. I am happy with the vendors that I did choose in all of those situations. 
but it was a little bit different. And I really, my experience helped me narrow down my selection as your experience will help you. But hopefully this is kind of some insight as to how to go about and find an ETMF vendor and then how to figure out what is important to you and how to get the best system that works for your company. So with that, I believe we have time for questions. Excellent, coming back here now. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, it's a very insightful presentation. And um, right now I wanna get all of your burning questions in. So I'm just going to uh, start with this one. Um, what are your thoughts on migrating a TMF or ETMF into your new system halfway through the trial? Is it worth it or should you just carry on as your and look to start the next trial fresh? Excellent question. Unfortunately, it's going to depend. Um, I've been in a situation where we implemented our new ETMF and we made the decision to migrate some studies. Um, we, it depend, we took a look at where we were in that study. Was it in the middle or was the end right around the corner? If the end was right around the corner, we decided not to migrate those studies to just keep them in the ATMF that they were in and then eventually get that list of documentation and, and house it on a, a secured shared drive. We did migrate studies mid-study and in the situation that I'm in now, we have three studies and so we will make the decision to migrate all of those ETMFs, all of those TMFs into our ETMF, specifically just so we have all of our documentation in one place. But if you have 20 ongoing studies, it might not make the most sense to migrate all of them. You might want to pick and choose which ones you do that. Okay. That's good. That makes sense. Thank you very much for that uh, response. The next question is, in the presentation, you mentioned ranking vendors based on criteria like an RF, um, uh, sorry, an RFI. You talked about the advantages of these scoring tools. Um, what are some of the disadvantages in your opinion? Well, as I mentioned, we had a list of 50 things that I thought were important to an ETMF. And an hour and a half demonstration, we certainly did not see all 50 of those things. So I thought that the scoring tool was valuable, just kind of a consolidated way to get feedback from our participants. An RFI is great. It's an awful lot of information, a lot of technical information. Um, the second vendor scoring tool I put together, I gathered information from an RFI and it was a little bit overwhelming. But in my opinion, the vendor scoring tool really, even if you narrow down the criteria that you want to rate, it does provide you with a little bit of feedback, especially from other participants you know what you like and you know what you've seen that you think will work. But getting that feedback from other folks, I think, is important, too. Whether you use that vendor scoring tool or whether you just do a download or something, I think that feedback is important. Absolutely. Feedback is definitely key um, with anything. So uh, thank you for that answer, Kate. Um, how important is the size and trajectory uh, of an organization on what type of system for your company? Good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, you're going to want an established company. You're going to want a solution that is going to be around. I mean, maybe you're not going to use this particular ETMF in 20 years. Maybe the things will have changed and we'll be doing something different. But you want a solid company that has experience and is not going away anytime soon. Um, what the size of the company doesn't necessarily matter as long as you feel supported. So maybe you want a large, very established vendor and that's fine, but do they have the infrastructure to give you the support that you need? This is new. 
you're using a new system and you're using implementing new processes. So you're going to want whatever the size of the company, you're going to want to make sure that you have somebody that you can go to if you do have questions or if your users have questions or you need additional feedback or support from them. Absolutely. Okay, and next question that we have here is, um, how long does a typical vendor selection process take? Uh, what can derail or delay the process? And how would you uh, mitigate these factors? So, a lot of full loaded uh, question. <laughs> a lot of things going on. I have actually participated in, I'm not going to name names, but I have participated in vendor selection that we thought was going to take a month and totally, absolutely got derailed. Uh, the vendor that was chosen was not the one that some people wanted. And so we got a lot of pushback. We had to go back and back and back to the vendors asking more and more and more detailed questions. And how there was really no way that we could anticipate that. We thought it was a very straightforward vendor selection process. And we were really surprised at the end when it totally got derailed. And it went out another month. So the whole project got delayed for another month because we wow. really wanted to answer these questions. Mm -hmm. I think that's an extreme situation and hopefully that doesn't happen to everybody. I would think that vendor selection, it depends on how quickly you want to get this process going and the uh, you as the driver of the process. Making sure that everybody's comfortable though is key. So if it's the IT team that isn't familiar with these vendors and has a lot of additional questions, just, I mean, I wanna say like a four to six week timeline should be reasonable, but as you're going through kind of taking the temperature of your team, understanding uh, is there a red flag being shown because of some of the questions that are being asked, then you might need to reevaluate your timeline. Sorry, that wasn't an exact answer to the question, but you know, just trying to, to, like I said, take the temperature, but understand the comfort level of everybody that's involved to see how the, if the timeline is accurate or not. Okay, and that makes sense too, because you need to take like everybody into consideration, right? When, when I think something so that I completely understand uh, how that would work. Um, Next question is, how do you avoid analysis paralysis when looking at ETMF systems? Any tricks that you can give to get management to just make a decision? Yeah, that's a good one. It is. <laughs> you can't, you could, you could ask questions and keep going back and doing more and more demonstrations. I think in that situation, you really have to identify what is important to you? What do you think is a feature or a set of features or a company that is going to make you successful? And we're talking ETMF. So ETMF, it's document management, searching for documents, storing documents, making sure that you have quality documents. The systems may look a little bit different, but ultimately you want to be comfortable. And you could, you know, just analyze and analyze and analyze, but as long as the system itself meets those criteria that are most important to you, I think you're going to be successful. These are all solid vendors and they know what they're doing. Asking them questions is going to make you feel more comfortable with the system and the company itself. And I think being comfortable with the company itself is very, very important and will help you know that you have made the right decision. Okay, that makes sense as well. Making sure that um, the company that you choose will be on the same page and that they understand your needs and wanna make sure that you know you get things uh, moving along and that they understand you. So that's a very, very good question, a very good answer. Um, the other question that we have here Hold on a second. Okay. Um, so it says here, I fall into that group of new to TMF with a startup. 
are you able to speak on specific vendors you have worked with and what were the good and the bad qualities of the platform? I feel like that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, a lot of good loaded questions today. Yeah. Um, I don't want to sway anybody's opinion of one company or another. I have looked at several and there are some features that I value in some of these systems and there's some features that I do not value in some of the systems. I know that's not a great answer. I, you know, I'd love to be able to say, just go with Montrium and that's it. Um, but you're really gonna have to, to analyze, every situation is different and you're in a startup, maybe you want something a little bit more simpler. Maybe you really want a company that you can partner with that will help you navigate through this. There are vendors that will do that. Um, but my experience isn't necessarily going to be the best for you. So if you're new to TMF also, then maybe there's things that I've looked for in a system that you don't necessarily need. And so I think you're just unfortunately going to have to go the route of doing the assessments and analyzing the systems and seeing what is important to you, what you think will make you successful. Excellent. Hopefully I politically answered that. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, you did. And um, so that is it for today. Well, those are all the questions that we have. Um, I just want to say thank you um, very much, uh, Kate, for the wonderful presentation, for answering um, all of the questions. I'm just going to ask you to remove um, yourself from the stream. So I could just start sharing my slide. Yeah. Stop stream. <laughs>